Squadron Sinister, the precursor to Squadron Supreme, is a pastiche of the Justice League. As the team evolved from villains to heroes, and with characters carrying over from Sinister to Supreme, the satire and the parallels carried over as well. It might not have been appropriate to have a team so similar to their distinguished competitions on screen up until recently, but now, in between Justice League from 2017 and Man of Steel 2 with DCEU Superman still a few years away, it's a sweet spot, if you will, to introduce a team like this. And with the success of Amazon's The Boys, another team that parallels the Justice League, while at the same time deconstructing the entire concept, proves that fans are more than alright with the concept. But where and how would a Squadron Supreme team appear? Let's talk about it. Before we start though, let me say thank you, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more for watching JLS Comics. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the content we upload just like this each and every week. Alright, let's jump back to the video. Created by Roy Thomas for 1969's Avengers comic book issue 69, the original team was formed in story by Grandmaster to battle Kang the Conqueror. The team was comprised of Wizard, Nighthawk, Hyperion, and Dr. Spectrum. In Mark Gruenwald's 1980s era Squadron Supreme title, it's explained that this team was based off a team located on Earth 712. It's a multiversal concept, this was a squadron, but good guys now. Hyperion is Superman, Power Princess is Wonder Woman, Nighthawk is based on Batman, Wizard on the Flash, and Dr. Spectrum is based on Green Lantern. Now, there was a Wizard and Jessica Jones on Netflix, but that was a different version, and that was under Jeff Loeb, and it's questionable if that's all still considered canon at this point. That was Robert Coleman. The Squadron's Wizard is named Stanley Stewart, and he went by other names like Blur, so they could avoid the confusion by using a name like that. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Grandmaster is played by Jeff Goldblum. King the Conqueror is rumored to be making his long-awaited debut very soon, which all plays into the story that we've been talking about. I've talked about it quite a bit here on the channel, especially now that both time travel and the multiverse concepts are boring ahead full steam cinematically. We've already had an introduction to the multiverse expanded upon in Spider-Man Far From Home, as the time travel concept was in Avengers Endgame. The projects that will next pick up this baton and carry the concept even farther are of course Doctor Doom and the Multiverse of Madness, and Disney Plus's Loki series currently on hold due to coronavirus, but that hasn't stopped the rumors from rolling in. A couple weeks ago, a website called Bleeding Cool says a source has told them that the Loki production is ordering, quote, all manner of materials, end quote, whose common thread is Squadron Supreme. One thing reported on, and yes, I know this is a weak connection, but with all the other points, it does lend credibility. So a producer for Loki walked into a comic book store and bought a Squadron Supreme trade paperback. And the thinking there is that this is research material. And that in and of itself might be nothing, but we have to couple it with the rest of what we know and what the insiders are saying. And now, even more recently than that, we have a Twitter scooper, Daniel RPK, via his Patreon, saying that a Squadron Supreme project is indeed in development. Saying that yes, Squadron Supreme is on the way, they're going to appear in Loki, and that a project of their own is indeed in development. The caveat here is that the members will first appear, but not as the entire team. They're saving that full togetherness, if you will, for their own ensemble project. And this follows the normal plan of action for Marvel, which is to plant Easter eggs years before they bloom to fruition. They've also been introducing characters that will ultimately come together as a team. And this is especially true on Disney+, Plus, where both Thunderbolts and Young Avengers are primed for their debut. And all those, mind you, closely tie to the MCU, the theatrical side, specifically to where we are now, via General Thunderbolt Ross, and so that all ties together. After 2015 Secret Wars event, a new Squadron Supreme was formed. This team was based on Earth 616, the main Marvel Universe. The team was created by members from Worlds Destroyed by Jonathan Hickman. This Nighthawk was pulled from the Supreme Power storyline of the early 2000s and Earth 31916. Dr. Spectrum is from The Great Society, another Justice League pastiche, and they're from Earth 4290001. Blur is pulled from DP7 and the New Universe, and Hyperion is from Avengers, written by Jonathan Hickman. It's a team that fought Namor, killed the Atlanteans, and brought them into contention. And the next part of that story helps validate a recent Mikey Sutton scoop, and that is that Thundra is being considered as the opposing force to She-Hulk for her series. Thundra had to help Squadron Supreme in Volume 4, Issue 3, and became officially affiliated with them at that point. Teams coming, we have multiple scoopers talking about this. It plays right into the multiversal concept that is coming to fruition. The latest version of the team called Squadron Supreme of America was formed by Thunderbolt Ross with the help of Agent Coulson. 
This Squadron Supreme were a government sanctioned team in the wake of the Avengers and this would follow with the MCU as well. And honestly, there were a few different versions of the team so we could get a blending of the different versions. Will the team be working together as a sort of multiverse Avengers team to track down Loki for the Time Variance Authority along with their Minutemen? Will a government sanctioned team need to take down another team in the Thunderbolts after they take a villainous turn? Could all of this be true? How cool would it be if Henry Cavill was cast as Hyperion, mirroring his turn as Superman? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. What we don't know yet is if the Squadron Supreme will be on Disney Plus after some of the members appear, or if they'll make it over to the theatrical side of Marvel Studios for a movie theater debut. Now, keep in mind that the team will be debuting as individual members, as I said, on Disney Plus, potentially on Loki, if these rumors are to be believed. The Disney Plus slate is filled up, as is the Marvel Phase 4 movie slate so they would be coming as a team at the earliest with phase 5 2022 we already know even though it's unannounced unofficial what that slate is so we're looking at squadron supreme as a team coming 2023 2024 at the earliest whichever it ends up being they'll surely be closely connected my inclination is that it will end up on streaming which is perfectly fine given the quality and budgets that disney is throwing at their streaming content besides if it worked out so well for the boys it'll work out well for the squadron that's it for this one my friends jump down to the comments and we'll continue the conversation there don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to know when i upload videos just like this each and every week i'm jesse this is jls comics and i'll see you soon